What's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend and today I'm joined with Tal Short. We are here at Reebok HQ. We are doing a Reebok Nano History. So we're gonna go through all 13 Nano models. Tal's gonna call out the year that each model went live and talk about some of the features that came along with each model. But that being said, Tal, do you wanna take us through the first ever Nano to hit the market? Reebok signs a deal with CrossFit. We start working on this. They're like, all right, cool. Now that you got this partnership, build us a shoe. So it's like, okay, well, we got to get really in tune with this, this community. So we jumped right in. We have people CrossFitting all over the place and we just wanted to learn as much as we could about the sport. Uh, obviously it was very early on in CrossFit. So just learning as much as we could. We flew to LA. We just spent as much time in the box as we could. So, you know, a couple things we learned was, you know, they like the flatter shoe. So you'll see early on in our nano progressions, they were a little bit slower drops. Um, people were just used to that at that space, um, just what they were wearing at that time. Durability was another component, right? So we were like, all right, you guys are beating these shoes up, right? These are getting hit really hard. So how can we, you know, really protect the shoe? And so, but we didn't want it to be overbearing. So, you know, we started out with the, the classic. So this is actually the OG, um, yeah, Nano right here. And then what year did this shoe go? 2010. 2010. 2010. And so can we go over like just maybe like one or two features that like stood out with this shoe when it went to market? Yeah, so one of the cool features is we actually put U-Form in it. So U-Form was an idea where you actually put it in a machine and it like, there's some there's some material in here that would like mold your foot. It's almost like a personalized fit. Yeah, a little dangerous with the old microwaves everywhere, but um, yeah, so we, we, we stripped it out, but it was a cool concept. So very tech but really yeah we wanted to keep it simple wide so the wide you know this was in the at this time we had never built a shoe this wide in the toe box so a lot of our designers were like this doesn't look right and we're like no no no. but we need it for that performance that splaying of the toes yeah so we definitely always fought on like how yeah. wide um, and it always came down to what was best for the performance actually gotcha. the u-form is interesting it reminds you like my hockey skates that's I used where, to get those molded yep, to your feet yep, that's that's where it came from yep the nano 2 this model just went live again this year yep. throwback it's crushed I feel like. So this was 2011? 2011, yep. And then compared to these two models, what were some big updates that the Nano 2 saw? Yeah, it was slight updates. So we, we noticed some, obviously with the ton of burpees that people were doing, there was some toe damage that was going on on the original one. So you'll see this is where we added in the Dura grip. But besides that, there was a lot of similarities, slight minor um, details with the materials, but overall a similar shoe. You can see from just a design standpoint too, there wasn't much to it, yep. We just really focused on the fit too, just the comfort. So one of the things that we got feedback on was, all right, cool, it's a great shoe, but I don't wanna wear it all day. So the wearability kind of beyond the box was something we started to focus on. Gotcha. And yeah, did you guys make the Nano 2 a little bit wider actually than the Nano 1? I think it's slightly, but not much. Yeah, gotcha. just a little bit more adjusted. Yep. That was something I noticed right away when I did like the yeah. renew 2023 yeah. Nano 2 review is like, dang, this toe box is amazing. Yeah, it's funny now putting it back on, right? So we're, we've, it's yeah. It's weird. It's My, different. Yeah. It like took me back in like time. I was like, holy shit, like where am I? Nano 3. Yep. 2012. Here we go. Because this model saw some bigger updates. So with the Nano 3, what did you guys change and why? Yeah, so uh, we obviously went into a very durability phase. So you can see we, we covered it with some TPU plastic, which was awesome because like even today, I think I still mow my grass in my Nano 3s because they're still around because they just won't break down. So we, we covered it you know, full of plastic, still made it lightweight. That's what you can see. We've made some cutouts here and there. Um, took some elements from the, the two. We did update some of the, the, the bottom. So you can see some of the toe splay. So to help with the runability, we added in this meta split. Yeah. So this was the first time we brought in the meta to split, which really helped early on that the shoes would kind of slap when you run. So we were looking on ways to, to focus that as running was becoming more a part of CrossFit. We, we kind of need to evolve with it. Gotcha. And then the midsole materials on these three, have they been relatively consistent with like the density and the feel of them, would you say? Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're pretty much the same density. Cool. Um, we, we have started to tweak it as we move down the line, but right now this was still the same. Yep. And now out of all the nano models, you said that you mowed your grass in this model. Yeah. Which is like the most nano dad shoe would it be Ooh. the three i would say three or four four yeah when we get to it great segue yeah good good segue let's talk about that so the nano four say dad shoe but <laughs> i would say it's it's brought like if this is like the hummer right like this yeah. has got everything this is kind of the more scaled back so still has the plastic but just toned down a little bit uh obviously the nano four was one of our most popular so I would say, you know, when we, we talk about what people like and what people talk about a lot, it, it was the, the four is a, a beloved nano from the community. Gotcha. And then 
with the belovedness of this model, what specifically do you remember like people loving the most with it? I think it was just the overall comfort and then durability. So this, this shoe doesn't break down. I think it still has the same meta split. So I think it was just a refinement of the three. I think people enjoyed the three and I think it was very iconic with the, the kind of, you know, the structure that we built, but this is a little bit more wearable and a little bit more comfortable. So. It almost reminds me of like the Speed TR silhouette in some ways. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, this was a 2013 model. Yep. 2013. Moving into the Nano 5, 2014. Yep. This model, once again, the odd number, got a big update. Yep. Why, and can we talk about a couple of features? Yeah, so this was a pretty big jump for us. So this was where we went really, it, it evolved into more of a piece of equipment. So where these were a little bit more wearable, we kind of, we really wanted to tech this out. So I think the first thing you're gonna notice is we have a full Kevlar upper on it. So we use, we worked with Kevlar. We, we wanted to make the shoe bulletproof, as was part of the brief. So the idea is we put Kevlar on it, because obviously it's lightweight, it's breathable, but it's also super durable, which is what they're known for. So obviously a new aesthetic to a new look to it, uh, the, the tooling, so this is the bottom, was all changed. We added in a rope pro, so a more aggressive rope pro. As people started climbing ropes more and more, we, we got a, you know, we definitely had to update the shoe to, to match that. So super lightweight, super deconstructed, which is very different than where we were. Um, some people absolutely love, I say this is one of the more polarizing nanos we had. Some people absolutely love it, and some people don't love it. So it, it was one of those, it was a good jump for us because it, it kind of sparked where we go down the line. Gotcha, and with the big updates of this model, looking at the midsoles, they look a little bit different. Is it just the shape and design, or did you get a little bit of a material tweak there too? Well, we also added a little bit more. So gotcha. that, that was the big component. Is a little the, bit more stack height. Yeah, so the, the, you know, the actual compression set is still the same, but we just made it a little bit higher, a little bit. Gotcha. We, f we felt like underfoot, you could still feel like, you know, like you're locked in, um, but we, you could add a little bit of foam, which helps with runnability and just overall comfort. Gotcha. Nano 6, Here 2014. This was the first model that you came on to the Nano line, correct? I did, yeah. This was it. This was my baby. So I would say this is the most popular Nano that we've ever done um, until the new ones, hopefully. But um, as you can see, we made a pretty big, you know, we had a branding change. So uh, Reebok was moving into more of this Delta space. So we were, we obviously added it to the shoe. Um, but I think the, you know, what people really liked is that first feel. So where we went with the five was very deconstructed. We almost overbuilt it here in comfort. So when you still put this on, you can feel the amount of foam we have in here. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I think people just really enjoyed it. It still had all the performance attributes that you have in the five, but I think it's just much more wearable um, kind of all day as well. Gotcha, and you were still working with the Kevlar folks. So yeah, we still had the Kevlar, but you'll see we kind of pieced it where you need it. So yeah. that's part of it. So it did take out a little bit of the weight because we added in quite a bit of weight in the heel because we were adding so much foam. So we're like, where can we you know, take out some? So yeah, this was still Kevlar, but you know, really cool you know, shoe. I'd say it's, yeah, it's definitely this colorway. We've, um, we did the, we looked through the archive and it, this is, this colorway specifically is sold more color, more than any other. Dude, you can't know. beat black and I know. gum. And, but this black was the start of the black gum craze. So good. I know we show it down here, but this was a, a, a set much later. Interesting. This was the first time and a quick story on that black gum. It was the last colorway that came in. We weren't even going to launch it. We were moving on to the seven, but we were like, man, that just looks amazing. Like we have to figure out a way. So we launched it. It sold really well. And then it got to a point where even as we moved on to different nanos, we would keep this on Reebok.com over and over because people still wanted it. Finally, we had to stop it. Um, and I, I think, you know, everyone's asking for it to come back. We'll see someday. But um, yeah, this was definitely the, probably one of the most loved nanos we've done. Before we move on, I do have a question on that. Sure. With the bring back of the two, is it difficult for you guys to bring back older models and small batches like that because I'm always curious like is it hard to keep inventory for every single model line because I'm sure it's wicked expensive and very tough logistically so like with the six for example if you guys were to ever bring that back if like would it be very difficult to do so and if so like what do you have to kind of tweak on yeah, the internal there's a, system? There's a lot of like logistics around it, right? So you've got the branding, right? So we're now back to our normal Reebok branding. Yeah. So there's a branding change. Like there's things that, do we want to bring this back? Yeah. Um, there's also logistical things. Like we might not work with the factory that built the shoe. So it actually happened with the Nano 2. We were no longer with that factory. So we wanted to launch that last year on like the 10 year anniversary, but we weren't able to because we switched factories. So we actually sent the new factory a sample and they de-engineered they, they de it um, from, it was 
just crazy. So they had to like rebuild the shoe, um, and luckily we were able to get it out. But yeah, there's a lot of things, and some of it is strategic, right? So we want to make sure yeah. that it's what people actually want us to bring back. So that's why we spend so much time reading everyone's comments, because it's like, all right, we can get a really feel for what's going on in the community and understand like which ones they want us to bring back. Gotcha. Yep. Fair. Very cool. And so I know you probably can't say much about this, but like you brought back the two this year. Is there any other older throwback model coming back this year? Maybe next year? Maybe 2025? We're going to keep the two. Like that will be the focus is like a throwback. Awesome. But I, I do think we've got some stuff down the line that the community, especially the OGs, that will really, really like. Cool. Yeah. I know, we can't, I, I know yeah. we can't say that much yes. because I, I don't, otherwise the folks no. at Reebok here, I'm going to go missing in a week and that's Correct. how they'll, it's going to go. They'll walk you out of here right now. Yep. Uh, Reebok Nano 7. Yep. This was the 2015 model. Yep. Let's talk about the 7 because I feel like the 7 is also a very polarizing model, no? I would say it's probably, our, our, besides the 5, I, I think the 7 was probably the most polarized. So what we did is we, we wanted to bring out this flex weave. So this was the brand new upper for us. We found this technology. Um, it's, it was actually, it's a pretty cool story. It was used for office chairs and we just happened to be at the factory in Vietnam and we saw it on the wall. We're like, what's that? And they're like, explain what it did. It was a special weaving process. We're like, that's pretty cool. Let's try it on the shoe. Prototype after prototype, and we ended up here. We probably, to be honest, rushed this one. We, we if you remember, there was a Nano Seven, there was a Nano Seven Weave. Yeah. The Weave is what we really wanted to launch with, but we were, you know, there was some some you know decision making that we probably yeah. would go back. But overall, I mean, the shoe performed. It wasn't as comfortable as we wanted it to be, um, and that's where we started focusing kind of on that performance comfort as we move forward. But I would say, without this shoe, though, we wouldn't have some of this new stuff that we have because this started this whole flex weave, and since the Nano Seven, all the way to the the X3, it's been flex weave on the upper. So, nice. like I said, yes, this was probably you know our least you know well like, least like Nano, but that's okay because without that, we don't have the the yeah. X3 that everyone loves. So the classic, you got to fail and make mistakes to learn a, and get better. This was definitely a fail for us, but that's okay. We we took a chance, but it, it's evolved into something great. So. Also, I think I also misspoke. I said 2015. This is actually later, yeah, right? 2016. 2016. Yep. Okay. So Nano 8, 20. 17. 17. So you just got to It's like one I, year I, below. I, I know. I literally haven't slept in 35 hours, folks. So like math, the no good in my brain. Here we go. So Nano 8. So what we did was we took everything that people didn't like about the 7 and we applied to the 8. You see we did this performance collar. Yep. So once again, focused. And we wanted to make it very visible. Like this is a really comfortable shoe. And as soon as people put it on, like, oh, wow, a very, very yeah. different shoe. And then the flex we've evolved. So it's got a little bit of stretch to it. Not a ton. But we'll get into the stretch as we move on. At this point, though, we, we felt like the 8 was really well liked again um, so people enjoyed the, the you know the, the improvements we had made um, and it's a you know a nice wearable shoe as well yeah. gotcha and then with the eight the seven six five so so in the five you guys increase the stack height a little yep. bit that's pretty consistent throughout these models you'd say right yep sweet moving oh. into the nano nine yep this is the 2018 model. Yep. How has this shoe been received? Because I feel like I get a lot of back and forth on the nines and tens. Really? Yeah. So the nine, we do like a, a product survey. So after we sell a certain amount of pairs on Reebok.com, we send out a, a satisfaction survey. And the uh, Nano 9 was actually the highest rated shoe that we've ever had in the company. Interesting. Over, over like even our classic shoes. So yeah, when I say that people that bought it, and all that survey is is like, all right, you bought this product, do you like it? Would you recommend it? And it, it got the highest score that we've ever had at Reebok. So and it's still the top. We've had some close wins with some of the uh, more recent ones. But yeah, so I think a lot of it is the stretch material. So we were able to put, add in stretch finally. So the cost of flex we had come down we were able to add in a little stretch which is a little more expensive and I think the big component was we we this was the first time we added in the cross check back into the nano so gotcha. the idea is from the two obviously two three you see that cross check and then you you obviously see it here so that was a super late change to tell you the truth there's a lot of samples laying around upstairs with still the the delta to it um, as a brand this was the first time that we kind of hinted that we were gonna move away from the delta and back to kind of our original cross check so uh, this was an exciting time but I remember we were like on a call with the factory on like Christmas Eve making this change it was wild because it was like it was super late in the process like you don't make changes like this and yeah. it turned out great um, they did a nice job and and yeah really everyone really really liked nine two follow-up questions the TPU wrap sure what inspired that change because this is a pretty notable change from yeah. all the models thus far yeah we wanted something visible I think what what's cool about it is it just keeps you locked into the platform right so you you've got the nice soft foam so what we did here is we've actually softened up the foam so the idea was, okay, with a softer foam though, you want to make sure it doesn't compress too far out. So the idea was to kind of lock you in. That's where that TPU kind of cage came in. So, Got you. And yeah. then the shift from Delta to the cross, why? 
Uh, it was a brand change too. Gotcha. Um, so it was just something we wanted to unite the brand. So our classics brand has always used that. Delta, so we were just, it was a new kind of chapter for Reebok and uniting under one brand has been tremendous for us and it was the right, it was the right decision. Gotcha. Sure. Nano X. Yep, the old what? X. So, do yeah. you like this model? I do. So what's funny about this was out of this, all these models, this is definitely the most expensive to make. So we, we, we were at a time where we put all the bells and whistles in this shoe. If, you, if I walk upstairs, they'll still yell at me for how much we spent on building this shoe because it was, uh, it didn't <laughs> just say it was, it, we put everything into it. So the stretch flex weave, we actually thinned out some of the, the we changed the, the last, whoa, there we go. We changed the last a little bit, um, just, to, just to thin out some of the volume in there. Um, but yeah, I, I think there, this is a love hate again with, with this one. I think that the height of it, you can see it's, it, it, it sat a little bit higher in your foot, especially on the back. Yeah. Um, but I think visually, it's one of our most compelling nanos. I think it's very iconic looking. And, yeah. and when you have it on, it's great. It was just a little heavy for everyone. I was, personally love this shoe, but you know why? And it's funny you say, because it's heavy, it reminds me kind of a skate, like a skate shoe. Yeah, and that's I true. love skate shoes. And I was talking to a buddy at the gym about that. He's like, that's why I love this shoe. I was that's like, awesome, oh, crap, yeah. like, that's so funny. We actually talked about seating it to like skateboarders, like on the West Coast, no just way. as a fun, because we thought like, you know what, it, it could work as a skate shoe, like just yeah. as some fun, just like some um, a marketing play. We didn't end up doing it, but we always thought that Nano could work really well for skate, so. That's sick, that's yeah. so funny. X1. Yep. Do you feel like this would be another polarizing model? I do, I think it was, a. a a really big jump, right? So I think through the six to 10 was all, you know, slighter, you know, definitely evolutions. This was like a total revolution. So we definitely wanted to play and as CrossFit was getting much more runnable, like you know, we were looking at like, what's the most programmed workout in CrossFit? It was the one mile run, right? Like obviously we know all the, the workouts that have running into it. So we definitely wanted to see, we added in a little toe spring where it helped with the run, but we also made sure that you were still locked in. So that was the idea is to make it feel, look more like a running shoe, but still perform like a nano. Yep. Two follow up questions about the X1 that I'm curious about. The increase in drop, was yep. that because of the running and like versatility side where a higher drop could be more favorable for some lifters? Yeah, I, I think, so that was purely on just the overall fit and like runnability of the shoe. Gotcha. So from four millimeters to seven, we noticed that the, the normal, just average athlete did not notice a difference. All right, so my next question on the X1 is the midfoot construction. Yep. Did you guys get a lot of flack for this breaking a little bit quickly on folks? Yeah, there was some, you know, some, everyone climbs a rope, you know, slightly different or it hits their foot in a different thing. So to make a, you know, a perfect rope climbing shoe for everyone, it's really, really challenging. So yeah, there were some things we learned along the way for sure um, that we applied to the next one. So yeah, there was definitely some feedback. The problem is, was the, you know, the, the athletes that were doing the fireman drop where they were catching it on the way down. So safety wise, it was great. And that was our number one concern. We weren't ever having people slip off the rope. It was just the people that were coming down really, really fast were trying to tear it up. So yeah. Yeah, like bit too hard almost. Correct. Gotcha. It was almost too good of a bite. Yeah. And that was an issue for yeah. those trying to get like down. Pulled like, awesome getting up, but then you need to like let go. So I was like, you guys are burning the shoe. So yeah. of course it's gonna tear off. So. Gotcha. Yep. So Nano X2. Yep. <laughs> this was a model that I feel like a lot of folks loved. This is the 2022 model. Yep. Um, major changes with this. They're not like really grandiose, but I feel like the shoe did have some subtleties that really increased the wearability of it. Yeah, so I think you're, you're spot on. The wearability was the number one thing we wanted to do. So we knew we could take some elements from the X1, but we, we definitely, and I think it starts here with the, like our new flex weave that's super premium. I, we thought it gave a really good look. Cause if you remember on the X1, we had like three different materials. So we had this one here, we had a grit, which was a little bit more traditional kind of grittier one. Mm -hmm. um, and then a luxe one, which was really nice. It was only on a couple of our black top packs and some of those fun, like higher end packs. So this one, this material, we actually were able to price out. And I think it just gave it a really a, a premium look. And then also the heel clip design. So we definitely made it look a little bit faster, a little bit more wearable, as you said, where it might not look like a piece of equipment, more like just a, a shoe that you'd be able to, you know, go to brunch to afterwards instead of just like, oh, yeah. I've got this really technical shoe on. It doesn't feel right with my outfit when I go out, so. Yeah. And then a quick midsole ask. The X1 to the X3, that was the, these are the first models that we saw the Floatride Energy foam, right? Correct, yep. So that was an exciting time for us. So, you know, Floatride Energy is one of our award-winning, is our award-winning foam 
um, in our running team. So we were, under, we were figuring out a way um, to get it in there. Um, it's super expensive, so we couldn't put it all over. And it did, wouldn't work as a full midsole for us on the nano side, just based on you know, some of the tear strength of it. Uh, but the idea is we got it where we need it, dropped it in, um, and really excited for that. Yeah, it was a really fun ad for us. Gotcha, and then last Nano, 2023 model, the Nano X3. Yep. I feel like this model has been a pretty big hit for you guys. I've loved this model. Let's talk about some of the changes implemented in this shoe because this yeah. shoe I feel like has like just a whole other step up regarding tech. Yeah, so I think the number one thing obviously that we put in the shoe that we've spent a lot of time talking about, and I know you and I talked about it when we launched it, was that lift and run chassis system. So the idea is, can you really build a shoe that's really, really good at lifting and running? Obviously, you, you can't run a, you know, run a mile in a lifting shoe, like per se, but is there a way we can make it really, really good at both? And we think we found that balance. So you can kind of see the, the, the plate actually comes all the way into the forefoot. You can see it here. Um, so the idea is that when you're lifting, there's that dome shape piece of plastic, it flattens out, makes you feel stable. But then when you're just doing, you know, body weight stuff or with less weight, um, it just sits in there. And, and what's great is we surround it with that fluoride injury foam. So you don't even feel it. So you, when you're just standing there, you don't even know what's in there. And that's exactly what we were going for. So yeah, super techie, um, but we didn't want it too much in your face, but we did want to call it out. So you'll see that we, we had it and sometimes we highlight in colors. Um, but yeah, the idea is that we really wanted to, you know, get back to that really performance driven shoe with a nice look to it as well. So you'll see from a wearability, we made sure the, the front of the shoe looks nice and clean, and a lot of the, the, the party and the fun goes in the back, like a mullet almost, yeah. like, like, you know, the, business this is in the front. The mullet of the nanos. I, I didn't want to say that, because <laughs> I don't think that's exactly great marketing, I'll, I'll, but I'll okay, you can say I, it. I can say it. <laughs> so question really fast, because the Nano X2, the wearability of this upper, yep was a great improvement, but you guys tweaked it again here. Yeah. Was that solely for performance, but also some looks? Because I feel like the X3 looks pretty dang good. Yeah, no, I'd say it's more performance driven. So we, it, we, got, we got a way to make it a little bit lighter, a little bit more breathable, um, and that was part of our focus. So yeah, it wasn't, we didn't just change the change. There was just, there were some elements that we thought we could improve on. Awesome, well, dude. I think that wraps up the Nano History video here. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much for having me out to Reebok HQ. Yeah. If you have additional questions or comments on any of the Nano models, drop them down below. Tal might poke in and read them, just obviously. Of course, always. Keep them all positive. No, no, no. Or not. Or not. We want the truth. But as always, drop like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate yeah. the time. Thanks for coming around.